Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the occasion of the Saudi Founding Day. His Majesty expressed wishes of abundant health and happiness to the Saudi King and further progress and prosperity to Saudi Arabia and its people. He paid tribute to the remarkable civilization and development achievements witnessed by Saudi Arabia over the decades. His Majesty praised the deep Bahraini Saudi relations and the development they witness at all levels. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness to consolidate these historical relations and enhance cooperation to serve common interests. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the occasion of the Saudi Founding Day. His Royal Highness expressed his best wishes to the Saudi King and further progress and prosperity for Saudi Arabia and its people. He highlighted the depth of Bahraini-Saudi relations and the importance of furthering cooperation to achieve common goals. His Royal Highness also sent a similar cable to the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness at Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, directed that Bahrain drag racing club's non-compliances be referred to the public prosecution. The decision follows a review of a forensic audit report submitted by the National Audit Office on non-compliances within the Bahrain drag racing club. His Royal Highness emphasised the importance of enhancing accountability and responsibility while consolidating the principles of integrity and professionalism to preserve public funds. He noted the NAO's role in promoting best practice across all public sector entities. National Guard Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa inaugurated the outpatient clinic building of the National Guard Medical Support Unit in Sakir. Upon arrival, accompanied by National Guard Staff Director Major General Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Saud Al Khalifa, His Highness was received by senior National Guard officers. His Highness toured the building's facilities and was briefed on the advanced equipment and capabilities it contains, which represent a qualitative lip in the medical sector of the National Guard and provides the best health care for the National Guard members. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed affirmed his pride in the comprehensive levels of modernisation and development witnessed by the National Guard, which translate the visions and aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, in enhancing the capabilities of the National Guard. His Highness affirmed that outpatient clinic building is part of the development projects of the strategic five-year plans to raise the efficiency of the various sectors of the National Guard. He expressed his appreciation to the medical staff for their efforts and dedication in raising the medical readiness of the National Guard. Bahrain Defence Force Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the Chief of Pakistan Air Force Air Marshal Sahir Ahmed Babar Sidhu and his accompanying delegation in the presence of Defence Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Nawami and Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Dia bin Saga Al Nawami. 
The BDF Commander-in-Chief praised the deep relations between Bahrain and Pakistan, stressing the need to further develop them, mainly in the military and defence field. The meeting was attended by Defence Ministry Undersecretary Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and a number of BDF senior officers. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani, participated in a joint meeting for GCC Ministers of Foreign Affairs and the European Union, which was held in Brussels. The GCC side was chaired by Saudi Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the current session of the Ministerial Council of the GCC, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Fahan Al Saud, whereas the High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell, chaired the European side. The GCC Secretary General, Dr Naif Al Hajraf, also participated in the meeting. The ministers discussed at Gulf European relations in various economic, political and security fields and the means to enhance cooperation and develop mutual interests. They also addressed the political and security developments in the region and the efforts being made to maintain its security and stability and to reach political solutions to the ongoing conflicts in addition to a number of regional and international issues of common interest. The meeting issued a joint statement in which the two sides underlined the remarkable progress in the strategic partnership between them and stressed the importance of continuing to strengthen relations between the two sides in light of regional challenges. The Minister stressed the importance of promoting joint action in combating climate change, protecting the environment and developing renewable energies. They commended the commitments expressed by the GCC countries in this regard and seconded its participation in the UN Climate Change Conference. The statement underscored that the ministers exchanged views on the Middle East peace process, Yemen, Iran, Libya, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq and Afghanistan. They stressed the strategic importance of close coordination between the GCC and the EU in this regard. The statement underlined that the minister stressed the urgent need to improve the humanitarian situation in Yemen, agree on a ceasefire without preconditions and reach a political resolution to the conflict. The ministers expressed their condemnation in the strongest terms of the attacks launched by the Houthi militia against the UAE and KSA and expressed support for peaceful solutions for Yemen. The ministers reiterated their concern at the lack of progress towards resolving the dispute between the UAE and Iran over the three islands Abu Musa, Lesser Thumb and Greater Thumb. They reiterated the support for a peaceful settlement of their dispute in accordance with international law. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with Belgium Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs Sophie Willems on the occasion of the GCC EU ministerial meeting in Brussels. The two sides reviewed cooperation and the means to enhance it and discussed a number of issues of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with his Portuguese counterpart Augusto Santos Silva. The meeting reviewed cooperation between the two countries and the means to enhance it for the benefit of the two countries. They also discussed issues of common interest at the regional and international levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with his Slovenian counterpart, Dr. Anzil Logar. The two sides reviewed cooperation and friendly relations and the means to enhance them in various fields. They also discussed issues of common interest at the regional and international levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with his Lithuanian counterpart Gabrielius Lonsbergis. The two sides reviewed friendly relations between the two countries which are developing in various fields and the means to enhance cooperation. They also expressed issues of common interest at the regional and international levels. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Al Ziani, witnessed the launch of the 16th Arab International Conference on Mineral Resources in the Emirate of Fujara, which is being held under the patronage of the President of the UAE. During the conference, future visions and programmes for the mining sector were reviewed, in addition to a number of topics, innovations and research related to the mining sector, mineral wealth and natural resources. The conference aims to achieve a number of goals, most notably exploring new dimensions in mineral resource surveying, extraction and processing to achieve sustainable development, encourage mining investment and promote available opportunities in Arab countries. Al Ziani participated in the opening of the exhibition 
accompanying the conference, which includes the most important innovative services provided by the Fijara Foundation for Natural Resources Research and Geological Studies. The Minister of Information and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development, Ali bin Mohammed Aramehi, delivered a statement to a Qatar newspaper in which he praised the rich history of Saudi Arabia that made it a model of wisdom, moderation and peace. He expressed Bahrain's pride in joining Saudi Arabia in celebrating its founding day, which reflects the deep historic brotherly ties. He affirmed that the Arab and Islamic nations appreciate the role and stances of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the Saudi King, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the Saudi Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Minister added that celebrating this occasion is an affirmation of the wise vision of the Saudi leadership and enhancing Saudi status as a beacon of peace for the region and its people. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia celebrates for the first time the country's founding day following the royal order of the Saudi King to designate the 22nd of February of every year to celebrate this occasion. More in this report. السابع والعشرون من يناير المنصرم لم يكن تاريخا عاديا في مسيرة المملكة العربية السعودية بل كان The commemoration of Founding Day in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia dates back to February of the year 1727 AD, when Imam Muhammad bin Saud established the first Saudi state. The celebration of this day bears witness to the ancient history of Saudi Arabia and marks a pivotal day in its history. The history of Saudi Arabia dates back to the first civilizations that appeared on the Arabian Peninsula, and over the centuries the peninsula played an important role in history as an ancient trading centre and cradle of Islam, the second largest religion in the world. The first announcement for the commemoration for Founding Day came by royal decree issued by the custodian of the two holy mosques for this day to date back to February of 1727 AD, the year in which the first Saudi state was established by Ibn al dariya Imam Muhammad bin Saud. During that period, the Arabian Peninsula was witnessing political chaos and its countries and territories were in disunity. But the Imam's future vision created a metropolis that would flourish through the centuries that made him raise the slogan of unity and began with the city, al Duria, uniting its two parts, making it under one rule. Seven years after the end of the first Saudi state, Imam Turki bin Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Saud was able to restore the state and establish the second Saudi state with Riyadh as its capital. Ten years after its end, King Abdulaziz bin Abdurrahman al Faisal al Saud established a third Saudi state with the name of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This day will always remain a witness to the historical and civilizational depth of Saudi Arabia.
Saudi relations are a distinguished role model for strong cohesion and shared destiny. These relations are distinguished by steady growth of bilateral ties, thanks to the solid fraternal relations between the two peoples, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. Bahrain has always been of great support for the major role played by Saudi Arabia in safeguarding regional security and stability, as well as its international humanitarian initiatives and continuous development achievements under the leadership of the Saudi King and the follow-up of the Saudi Crown Prince, Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Bahrain and Saudi Arabia have always been assuming a pivotal role in preserving Arab and Islamic rights and freedoms, respecting international conventions, and serving the issues of the Arab and Islamic nations in line with its principles emanating for the Islamic religion. Today Bahrain joins the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in celebrating its founding day, joining their Saudi brothers on this blessed occasion.